Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you five tips that's going to make your general use of FreeCAD a lot easier and a lot quicker. These are tips that you may or may not know. I was going to do these as shorts, but shorts take far too long to create and also harder to edit. So what I'm going to do every month is try to pull together five tips for you. And these are my five tips for March. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. The hungry selection in the sketcher allows you to add items just by clicking on them. So any of these circles I can add and you'll notice they'll go green. But the trouble is if I miss one of these circles, let's say I wanted to pick my last one as this one and I accidentally missed it, then everything else gets unselected. There is a way of stopping this from happening. As I add the circles, if I hold down control, so I'm holding down control now, and I click into this space, no matter what I do, I cannot lose that selection. So just by holding down the control, it keeps that hungry selection in there. The minute I release control and select this blank space, then we unselect all the items. So just by holding down control, as we select, we mitigate against that risk of we'll accidentally missing our selection, say over here, and we can add these to that hungry selection. When we finished, then we can add our constraint. Remember that the sketcher doesn't have to just be used to create 3D objects. It can be used to create 2D objects that we can export out to say SVG. For instance, I've created two sketches in here if we look at them, you can see we have a number of geometries in here that have been constrained down. This creates a template I can take and I can select one sketch, this dotted line here, and this sketch and export that out to SVG. Notice that the lines within are all black and so are the points. This is done by taking both the sketches Coming down to the view, and then changing the color of the line color and the point color. Also, we have width of the sketches. So for instance, if I zoom in, you can see I've got this dashed line here. And I'll just increase the width, that line, that line width to two for the whole sketch. If I take both of these, and come up to file and export, I can export those out as a flat SVG. That means I can export those out into something like Inkscape. And when I open that in Inkscape, my file is opened and we get the SVG within. This can be edited. So this is all one group and we can move sub objects within. So this means if you haven't got any experience in any of these packages, then you can get that head start and just say, add labels to this by using the text. And we can add whatever we want into here. It's worth mentioning that when we create a sketch for export on the XY plane, and we add some dimensions in here. So we place a rectangle and set the height and width. I'm going to use millimeters. So I'm going to set the width in here of 100 and the height of 50. So I could be making something like an address label. If I take that, use that sketch, I can file and export. Then when we open it in Inkscape, file open, Inkscape will take on those dimensions. So 
you can see we've got a width and a height and we just need some minor adjustments in here to bring this down to the correct size. When we use some reference images in FreeCAD and we want to just trace half the image, then it may be worth using the clipping plane. For instance, I have this reference image here and it's centered in the middle. So I want to only trace half of this. If I come up to view, come down to the clipping plane, then I can use the clipping plane to see a half view of this image. So if I look at my axes down here, I can see that the Y axis runs this way. So I'm going to clip across that Y axis, half in the image. I then can create a new sketch on the XY plane. I still have the clipping plane open, which is here. And I've got my sketch panel opened here. Then I can start sketching just using half this reference. For a simple reference like this, then this wouldn't be applicable. But for something that's much more in depth, I can use the clipping plane and also the offsets remove any of that image that's a distraction to myself just leave in the bare minimum on the screen if we want to move objects between documents i can create a new document and just by coming into my previous document i can drag the object straight into the new document taking along the extrude and the sketch with it and when i drag that back we can move that back in if we use a shortcut key, so if I click on this one and use the Alt, then I drag in a link. For this to work, first of all, I have to come into the document and save it. And hit Control S to save. It's going to call it something like New Doc. Come back into the original. I'm going to click on the extrude, hold down the Alt key on the keyboard. Once I've got the key held down, I'm going to click and drag the extrude to the new document. You notice that the icon looks different. This is a link. If I click on it, I can see that the link object is here. If I roll over it, I can see it's saying doc1.fcstd. You can see it's a link. If I click on it, it goes back to my original document. Come back to that document. If I double click on the sketch, this has actually opened the original, so in doc one, the original sketch. This means that you can have your parts in individual files and pull them in, but we can do that via the tree view and using the alt key and dragging those into the documents to create those links. When creating assemblies, it can be quite time consuming. When we have objects that are blocking the parts that you want to constrain, for instance, if I come around here, I can constrain this circle to this one by control clicking them quite easily and using the constraint against those and setting that constraint. But when I want to constrain, say, this circle to in here, then I can look through the holes, but it can be quite hard to get to the constraint. This is where our wireframe view can come in handy. If I come up to view, draw style, and wireframe, this converts them all to wireframe. So I can take the edge that I want to constrain with, this one here, and come in and pick the edge actually going through the object because I've got nothing in its way and make the constraint against that, like so, and set that. I can even come in with something that's already constrained and have a look at one of the constraints. For instance, this one, and get to the other circle of that edge. So I've got the two edges, I can constrain those together and set those. I can come out of the wireframe, come out to the view, draw style, and back to say flat lines, we're back to where we started. Remember there are shortcut keys in there for the views. If I 
go up to view, draw style, and we see the V1 to V7. So V3 is the wireframe, and flat lines is V7. So if I type in V on the keyboard and free, we get the wireframe, followed by V, and then seven, we get the flat view. So I hope that's given you a few tips for FreeCAD. You may or may not have known them, but I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the new one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.